Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of All About Bridge Engineering and this episode is also put in the playlist Journey of a Trust. In this very episode we will be seeing how the reinforcement is tied up, is binded for the upcoming deck slab that will be casted very soon within 2 to 3 days once all the reinforcement work is complete. So on this side of the structure the reinforcement work is actually complete. However, on this very side the reinforcement is still under uh, the reinforcement work is still under progress only the bottom face reinforcement is in place and the top face reinforcement is being positioned so right now just focus on this very location this is the cross beam location and as i mentioned in previous episodes that on this very structure the deck slab is spanning only between the cross beams so i am actually standing on one of the cross beam locations as you can see the stair studs so it means that the deck slab will undergo one way continuous bending that is it will behave as a one way slab undergoing continuous bending continuous action so near the cross beams the main tension face would be the top face of the deck slab and in the middle of uh, this very in the middle of these two cross beams the main bending will be on the bottom face and sagging action will be predominant and accordingly the reinforcement is being binded so let us focus on one part of this thing so i have the ruler with me so this reinforcement that you are able to see over which I have placed the ruler is actually the main reinforcement in the top face and this is a space at 150 mm as you can read by the ruler. However if I check out the bottom reinforcement, the spacing of the bottom reinforcement, so you can see that this bottom reinforcement is maybe in the range of 80 mm. So one thing is clear that the main reinforcement at the top face is placed at uh, 150 mm and the main reinforcement at the bottom face is placed at 80 mm. Although the diameter of both these bars is same, I have checked that out. Now also figure out this very element. This is actually a cover block which is used to ensure that sufficient cover for the bottom face main reinforcement is available and the height of this cover block is something in the range of 40 mm so let us see this as well let me place the ruler so yes check out by this zoom section this is something in the range of 40 mm so it means that 40 mm clear cover to the main reinforcement is provided also note that since this is the main reinforcement and this is placed just above the clear cover so which means that this very reinforcement in the transfer direction is the distribution reinforcement. So there is again little confusion among the engineers that whether distribution reinforcement should be placed above the trans above the main reinforcement or the main reinforcement should be placed above the distribution reinforcements. For this check out through this line diagram the basis of deciding whether uh, main bar should be placed over the distribution bar or distribution bar should be placed over the main bar. So please note that we always want a higher moment capacity of the section and this is only ensured if we have a higher lever arm. Lever arm is a direct function of the effective depth. So if you place your main bars below the distribution bar for the bottom face then the lever arm will be more because the effective depth for this very bar will be more. But for the top face you have to ensure that the main bar is placed over the distribution bar so that for this very face the effective depth is more for the main bar and hence the lever arm is more so it's it's not a general criteria that you can uh, say that uh, main bar is always placed over the top or main bar is always placed under under the uh, distribution bar you have to decide which face will subject will be subjected to bending and accordingly you should ensure that the main reinforcement should be placed closest to the face of that very slab. So this was one concept and you also checked about these uh, cover blocks. The cover blocks are very important to ensure that all the steel is properly embedded in the concrete and at no point of time in future any reinforcement is exposed to the atmosphere. So this is the purpose of cover block. And also I have checked out at the end of the bridge they have actually placed one open joint uh, type of expansion joint and let's go closer to that so this expansion joint is composed of two angle sections and uh, sufficient reinforcement or is actually welded to this angle section as you can see 
and this will actually be going just let me bring it by another view so now you can see that i have placed one cover block also over the top of this expansion joint and this expansion joint is a simple open joint and not a strip seal type of expansion joint and these reinforcements that are projecting out of this expansion joint will be embedded in the concrete of the deck slab and uh, other reinforcement that are projecting on the opposite side will be embedded in the concrete of the approach slab so from this we can also get an indication of the thickness of the deck slab because the top level of the expansion joint should be leveled with the top level of the deck slab so let me place the ruler and see what is the thickness of the deck slab for this very bridge so i have placed my ruler and you can see that the reading is uh, 30 cm if it is not visible from this view let us keep the ruler at this very point so yes now it is clearly visible that the top of the expansion joint is actually at 30 cm which means the thickness of deck slab is 300 mm and i also mentioned that the span that the span for the deck slab is 2.5 meters because the distance between cross beams is 2.5 meters so you must be wondering that this deck slab thickness is very high when compared to a continuous span of 2.5 meters but please bear in mind that this is the deck slab of a bridge and not of a building where the maximum thickness is in the range of 200 to 250 mm and also in bridges we have different clear covers based on different exposure conditions and they are completely different from buildings and another thing is that bridges are exposed to heavier loads which are more dynamic in nature than the loads to which buildings are exposed and also we have impact factors induced in those vehicular loads so that is the reason why the thickness of deck slab is more for bridge decks when compared with the buildings also you can see these edge beams on both these edges they are having shear stirrups as well on both these edges so we'll be focusing on this very edge beam because the sunlight is more on this very side and you may be able to see it clearly so this edge beam is having shear stirrups throughout their length and this edge beam is generally provided because the parapet or the railing or the crash barrier will be embedded in this very section once the deck slab is casted so i don't think they will be applying a crash barrier they will just be having a mild steel railing on both the sides so we will see it when the deck slab is fully casted but also note that the shear stirrups are present on only on the edge beams and at nowhere in this very span we saw shear studs shear stirrups so generally in deck slabs we we restrict providing shear stirrups and even if the shear requirements are high we prefer to increase the thickness of the deck slab rather than providing shear links because providing shear links in the form of single c shaped sections or in the form of loops is actually very cumbersome for the workers and hence the care is taken that we uh, meet the shear criteria just by increasing the thickness of the deck slab and that is another reason why the thickness of deck slab for bridges is more than the thickness of uh, slab for the buildings or else we can just increase the grade of concrete or little longitudinal reinforcement so that the shear capacity is met so yes this was all in this episode of all about bridge engineering and uh, i hope i have shown you all the details that i could figure out at this very point and one major distance one major detail was about the confusion between the distribution bar and the main bar what should be kept where should be kept and i have cleared it with the sketch so still if you have some queries or doubts do let me know in the comment section